Freezer banking. Have you ever heard of freezer banking? It's a term where you are creating meals or you are prepping food to go into the freezer, stacking it up in there. Similar to canning, only obviously it's being frozen because there are some things that just aren't good when they're canned. Hello everybody and welcome to Sutton's Days. If you're new here, my name is Lisa and we are all about pantry preparedness. And part of our pantry, pre pantry preparedness is freezer banking. Now today, I am going to be cooking up a bunch of sausage patties. That's what I'm doing right here right now. And we are going to freezer bank these for quick and easy breakfast for Phil. When you can sausage, you cannot take that canned ground sausage and turn it into patties. It just doesn't work, right? And I don't care to can sausage patties because they are crumbly. To me, they're not as good. There's a there's a thing when you bite into a piece of meat where you're feeling that pull where you're, you know, it, it's just different. So when you can it, it's more like boiled meat because you have to add liquid. And so it crumbles very easily. It's not the same. It's just not the same. I really like sausage patties. Take a bite of meat. You know what I mean? So I am cooking these all up and bringing you guys along to show you how I freezer bank them. My goal for the end of January, between now and the end of January, is to get our our freezer situation condensed down to one freezer. Everybody should have goals. I'm not saying I'm going to meet it, but I'm going to be trying like crazy to make it happen. In order to do that, I have to process a bunch of things. Some of it will be canned. Some of it will be processed and frozen again. Some of it is just more organizing, you know, so I'm going to bring you guys along for all of that because we're going to be doing that to lead up to the January pantry challenge. Okay, let's do some sausage. One of the first things I do is I defrost the sausage. It comes in one pound packages. Um, you can do this with store-bought. This is, this, these are from the pigs, you know, that we raise. Um, and this year it was from the pigs that my neighbor raised uh, because we couldn't do it with the, the injury circumstances happening around here. So I divide that one pound package into six patties. As you can tell, there, there's a little thickness there, right? But that's okay, that's good. Um, when you do the math, it comes up to about 2.66 ounces of meat uh, per patty. Now, what gave me this idea was that uh, a while back, I had run across a sale on Jimmy Dean sausage patties. They were already cooked, already pattied up, and then just frozen. And I think, honestly, they were more for the sake of uh, restaurants, commercially commercially done things you know but they only wanted ten dollars for that whole box and it, it worked out really well um, we enjoyed them they were easy because they were pre-cooked you literally had to just pull them up you could either wow that's hot you could either bake them to you know reheat them up or you could microwave them however you wanted to do and they were super simple now I make Phil uh, French toast. I freezer bank French toast for Phil. And he really enjoys having the sausage patties to go with the French toast. So that is what we are doing. And no, I don't drain the grease uh, in between, as you can tell. I just cook them up. Sausage has fat in it. That's what makes it good. So when these come out, we will start freezer banking because all of the ones in the back there have already started to, they're cooled off enough to be able to do that. Now the fun begins. I had somebody say, can you show me how to make bags? Um, because, you know, WeVac sells uh, bags that are pre-made, okay? But say you have a roll and like this and you want to make your own size bag. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to do that. Um, because I am only going to be vacuum sealing um, two to three, depending on the size, which is why we're going to try to make them this small and see. And so we're going to come over here. Okay, we're going to take our bag, put it in there under the clip, and then close the door, press seal. It restarts the timer to four seconds. It doesn't run the whole vacuum sealer process, but when you hear that noise, it's done, okay? And you have 
a perfect seal. You want to check to make sure that those lines go all the way across and that's how you make a seal. Now we're going to have a little bit of fun, okay? These have cooled off enough, so I'm going to put three, two to three depending because you know they are different sizes. And we're going to come over here. Okay, I have set it on small bags, okay? And we're going to take our small bags. Well, this, did I cut these too small? I got these too small. Well, I cut those too small, see? So it needs to be able to hold up there into the bag. Okay, so I made a bigger bag because the small ones, the thin ones like that, um, don't sit up and allow it to stay in here. So I'm also going to change out the kind of bag. But for these particular ones, we're gonna do this. I've got it set on small. Never gets old. Never gets old. Okay. And so that is what it came out like. Which, pretty cool. My goal is to have them so that they lay kind of flattish, you know. But to me, that's a lot of wasted bag. I don't know if there's a way around that. So we are going to come back here. And these are the pre-cut ones, which honestly, are they're a good deal, right? And I'm going to put them in. And because, see, it's long enough, so I guess... Theoretically, still, there's some wasted bag, but I'm only putting three because that's that's the most he'll eat. Um, so it's kind of uh, pick and choose your battles, right? But these were the pre-made bags, and now we're going to do the same thing. Poof. Okay. So we're still looking at, now granted, if you can fit two or three more in here and that works for you, that's great. I'm looking for serving size, so for a serving size, this is good, but I, there's still some room up there. The point of freezer banking, honestly, is to do a bulk amount of work at once to save yourself a whole lot of time on the other end. It is very helpful, like if, if Phil, I'm reaching for paper towel. If Phil um, had to wait for me to cook sausage for him for breakfast, um, the sausage could go bad and he could starve to death, quite honestly. Because I don't always have time or the inclination to make breakfast. Um, I, you know, I'm not eating it. Um, I love the man, don't get me wrong. But it's, it's a lot to do every single day when you're already busy. This way, we are putting a crimp on Jimmy Dean, okay? And we're making our own um, pre-made breakfast that he can easily pu pull out, um, microwave, or heat up in the oven, however he wants to do it. The French toast goes right into the toaster. And so while he's toasting the French toast, he's heating up the sausage, and then the man is in heaven when he's putting syrup over the top of it. So, it's kind of a, a fast food breakfast, right? Without all of the work as it moves forward. This will last him most likely the entire winter. It's not like he has it every day. I'd spend a couple of hours doing this and I don't have to worry about breakfast for months. Months. Now, but Lisa, what if the grid goes down? Well, if the grid goes down, quite honestly, uh, we're going to be eating a lot of uh, sausage and French toast uh, until it's gone real, real quick. Or I will take that opportunity, if the grid goes down, and I'll can up the sausage because canned sausage is better than no sausage, right? Now, am I going to keep canning up ground sausage? Yes. Hello. Number one, we like pork. Okay, so if you don't eat pork, I get it. But um, we like pork, and I like combining sausage and ground beef for a lot of the ground beef recipes. So this gives us, you know, the opportunity to use the sausage for multiple different reasons in uh, different ways and all of them saving time. 
because the canned sausage, I can make sausage gravy like that, right? I don't have to pull it out of the freezer, defrost it, then cook it up, then make the gravy. No, all the hard work's done. I have to go get a jar out of the pantry, pour it into a pan, heat it up, and make the gravy. Yeah, that that's fast food, my friends, and it's the best fast food that you will ever have. Um, I use it to supplement ground beef because pork is cheaper than beef, okay? And the flavor is great. Pork has more fat in it. That's why I do Mississippi pork roast instead of Mississippi beef roast because the fat content in the pork um, is greater and it allows for that vinegar from the Mississippi pork roast uh, to, you know, infiltrate the meat and the fat and it just makes my mouth water. It's so good. Um, so this is freezer banking. This is what we're doing and I love it. I love having quick, fast, real food that doesn't involve me going out someplace, doesn't involve me having to pay somebody else to do it, right? I'm doing it. I'm handling it. We got it. And so do you. Remember, if uh, you want to check out the Mississippi pork roast, you haven't seen the Mississippi pork roast, check out this video right here. And until next time, everybody, be safe.